Hello! Welcome back to Bean and Books. My name is Alex and today we will be going through my quarterly reading wrap-up. Okay, so today we're going to be going through all the books that I read in the first three months or the first quarter of 2023. So The start of 2023 hasn't been a great reading term, like this first quarter. I'm hoping quarter two will be a little bit better. I'm thinking it's going to be quarter three that I have the most reading in because that's the summer and obviously I won't be teaching. So I have a feeling the reading's not going to pick up until then. But how we're going to do this today is we're going to start off by tier ranking the... I think it's 14 books I read in the first three months. So we're gonna do a tier ranking of those and then we're gonna go over some of these stats that I have so far and just talk about like my favorites and least favorites. So we have the tier ranking. I'm getting pulled up here. Okay, so there's 14 books. The tier ranks are the same as my 2022 end of year rankings. So at the top, we have Rent Free. This book lives in my head, Rent Free. Uh, next, we have Chef's Kiss, meaning like it was really good. I really, really enjoyed this book. Uh, and then we have Solid 6 out of 10. So it was fine. Like I enjoyed it, but isn't like a new fave. And then we have I Feel Nothing. So I read it and I really have no opinions on it. Uh, and then why did I finish this? So these are like very negative feelings towards this book, which I don't think I have any of those. So we're just gonna start off here. This is in no order. So the first book we have here is the Duke and I by Julia Quinn. This is the first book in the Bridgerton series. I'm gonna say that this one, I think solid six out of 10. I think I actually enjoyed the TV show better for the first book. I enjoyed it, but I liked the TV adaptation of this first book more than I did the actual book. Next, we have Chain of Thorns by Cassandra Clare. This is the third and final book in her Last Hours trilogy. And I don't even need to think about this one. That's going straight into Rent Free. Cassandra Clare is one of my favorite fantasy writers. The Shadow Hunters is one of my favorite fantasy worlds. And these, like, historical, the two historical series that she has, so Infernal Devices and Last Hours are two of my all-time favorite series. I love her character so much. I cried. I'm I'm so attached to Cassandra Clare characters. So I was very sad to finish this world, but I was really excited to see how it ended. All right. Next we have The Deal by I think L Kennedy. I I think I feel nothing about this one. It was it was just like it was fine. I very clearly went through a reading spree of contemporary romances and this was just like it was okay the hating game though i think it is it rent no i think chef's kiss chef's kiss i wasn't sure how i'd feel about the hating game like i know it's super popular but i hadn't seen the movie or really all I knew was like the general premise of what it was about and I loved it. I understand why it is a favorite. Okay, now I'm gonna have to remind myself of which book is which for the J.R. Ward books because I read them back to back. Okay, so it goes Lover Eternal and then Lover Awakened. So Lover Eternal 
we're putting into solid six out of ten because this is the second book in the black dagger brotherhood series and in the second book we follow oh what is his name why don't i remember i know in the third book it's sadist in the first book it's wrath who rage rage we follow rage and it was fine but i feel like half the book was just like setting up for the third book so i was more excited to get to the next book while i was reading this one the kiss quotient goes in solid six out of ten it was fine it wasn't like my favorite romance but i liked it more than the deal lover awakened goes into chef's kiss so far this is my favorite in the black dagger brotherhood series it's do i like it more or less than the hating game though i think less i really enjoyed the hating game that one we follow zetas and it was definitely the darkest out of the three that i've read so far but i just really like the character of zetas and what's her name bella i really liked bella so this is definitely my favorite so far in that series mythos so this one's hard. I listened to the audiobook for Mythos, which is narrated by Stephen Fry, who's the author, and the audiobook is amazing. But like the book itself, I'm just going to put in solid 6 out of 10, maybe there. Because it was good, but like I've read so many mythology books that wasn't like groundbreaking or anything, but the audiobook itself, like if we're ranking audiobooks, it's one of my favorite audiobooks I've listened to. This one might be a interesting opinion, but Get a Life, Chloe Brown just goes into solid six out of 10 for me. I liked it. I liked the premise behind it, but I took a while to get into it. I think I was just kind of getting to the end of my little spree of reading contemporary romances and I was starting to get worn out of that genre when I read this one. I think I'll like the other two better. Like I think I'll enjoy following the other two sisters more than Chloe, but we'll see. I am sniffly. Okay, people we meet on vacation. See, I'm already like forgetting a lot about it. So I think we'll put it in solid six out of ten i think i liked it more than get a life chloe brown but yeah that's it i enjoyed it like i would like to read more from emily henry because i did enjoy her writing style and i enjoyed the book but again it doesn't have that like impact on me that the hating game did Kate Fire unfortunately goes into I feel nothing but we're gonna put it above the deal this is the second book it is the follow-up or I guess technically the prequel to Graceling and I just I don't know I had some like weird feelings about it there were parts that I really enjoyed, but a lot of parts I was just kind of like, eh, about. So I'm, I'm going to put it in I Feel Nothing. Love on the Brain goes right up into Rent Free. I quickly have realized that I love Ali Hazelwood and everything she writes. So that is a no-brainer. And then my only non-fiction, I guess technically, I don't know, Mythos isn't really non-fiction, but... Kings and Queens of Britain nonfiction about the history of kings and queens in Britain and it's just it's gonna go and I feel nothing nonfictions are kind of hard to rank unless it's like a biography but it was it taught me things it was fine and then the Viscount who loved me is going up into chef's kiss I enjoyed it more than the Duke and I, but I don't know if I liked if I liked the 
book more than I liked the TV show. It was very different. There was a lot of things that they changed from the book that I didn't know about, obviously, until I read it. And in some ways, I enjoyed the changes that they made to the TV show. But in other ways, I kind of wished they had stayed true to the book and had more of the relationship with our two main characters, Anthony and Kate. But I enjoyed this one more than the Duke and I, and I just really like Anthony and Kate's story more than I like Daphne and Simon. So yeah, there we go. This is the first quarter of the year. So only 14 books. It hasn't been a great reading quarter. Like, it's not obviously awful because I don't have any books and why did I finish this? I haven't really hated anything. There's been a lot of books I've started and not finished, but I didn't necessarily like DNF them. I've just, I've been struggling to find like what I want to read. So I've been picking up a lot of books and then getting sidetracked and starting something else. So technically I've started a lot more books, but these are the 14 that I've actually finished. So it's been fine. <sighs> We're gonna look at some reading stats. So I'm going to put the pictures up on the video as I talk about them. But as we've already said, I have read 14 books in the months between January and March. Not a great reading quarter because I am about 10 books behind schedule for my reading goal. So this is nowhere near like my usual reading habits last year and the year before my average per books per month was like eight and this year I read quite a bit in January and like a decent amount in February but then in March I only read one book so we're gonna look at some of our stats here and we're gonna put them up here as we talk about them so the first one is books I read per month. So I read seven books in January, six books in February, and one in March. So obviously that isn't like great, like February, January and February, like that's a pretty good amount. Usually I said like eight was my average the last two years. So seven, six is okay. But March really, I did not do well in March. The only book I read was People Meet on Vacation. And I just, I couldn't get into anything else. My total amount of pages that I have read this year so far is 5,305. And I've listed to 15 hours of an audiobook. And I don't usually listen to a lot of audiobooks, but I listen to Mythos. So that's pretty good. All right. And then one thing that's changed a lot from last year in the first quarter, I read nine ebooks four physical books and I listen to one audiobook. I usually read way more physical books than I do ebooks, but I was borrowing a lot of ebooks from the library through Overdrive. So that is something new. I didn't do that a lot last year and I kind of took advantage of that in January and majority of the books that I read in January, I guess and February were ones that I borrowed through Overdrive. So jumping ahead to where I acquired these books, nine out of the 14 were library books that I borrowed. Four of them were books that I owned previously or bought within this year. And one of them I got through Audible. In the first quarter, I, of the 14 books that I read, eight of them were from series and six of them were standalones which those six were mainly like all those contemporary romances that I was reading plus the nonfiction. so I started three series this year which I'm trying to think of which three series did I start Bridgerton I started I guess the Brown Sisters is a series and then I think maybe The Deal by L. Kennedy I read four books that were sequels and I finished one series so far this year, which was The Last Hours. All right, and then another weird thing for this first term, I think this is the first time ever that fantasy has not been my most read genre over a period of time. So 57% of the books that I read in quarter one were romances. 
28% were fantasy, 7% was mythology, and 7% was nonfiction. So eight of the books were romances, four were fantasy, one was mythology, and one was a nonfiction. Of the books that I read, majority of them were in between 350 and 400 pages. One of them was between 750 and 800. One of them was between 500 and 550. Two between 400 and 450 two between 300 and 350 and one was less than 300 pages. I tend to read bigger books so I'm actually surprised that most of them were between 350 and 400 but I guess I'm not that surprised because that's kind of the length of most contemporary romances. I'm just used to like thicker fantasy books. All right and then average star rating for quarter one which if you looked at the tier list you would know already that I enjoyed most of the books that I read. So I had four books at four stars, six at 4.5 stars, and I actually had four books that I ranked as five stars, which if you don't know the system that I'm using is called Caw Pile. It's made by G at Bookros. I can link her channel down below. And it's just a Google spreadsheet and you type in like all your information and then it gives you your stats. So I'm curious, what are the ones that came out as five stars? Okay, so Love on the Brain, not surprised. Hating Game, not surprised. Chain of Thorns, oh, and Mythos, actually, which that one doesn't really surprise me because like ranking it as an audiobook, I really, I really did enjoy listening to the audiobook. So yeah, that's not surprising. All right, and then 14 books that I read, eight of them I would classify as new adult, four of them I would classify as adult, and only two of them were young adult, which again, usually I tend to read more young adult, so that's kind of new. All right, and then eight of the books I read were from a new author that I hadn't read from before, and six were from authors that I had read from before. And those ones are always kind of a little bit skewed because if I read like a new series and read multiple books, so for example for Bridgerton, the first book in the series I would classify as like new author and then the second book is author I've read from before. And then yeah, so the 14 books I read, there were 12 authors because two of them were from J.R. Ward and two of them were Julia Quinn. Every other author that I read this year I've only read one book from so far. So those are my quarter one reading stats. If you hate stats and stuff like this this is going to be a super boring video for you but I really enjoy watching these and I love entering my stuff into this spreadsheet. So I enjoyed it. I've been wanting to do like the quarterly wrap up so we have one now obviously and then we'll do one then what and then we'll do another one in june and september and then obviously end of the year and i'll just add on the books to the tier ranking as we go and then i'll shift things around if i realize that there was a book that i would like to change so there you have it there are my stats for quarter one let me know down in the comments like how your first three months of the year went in terms of your reading did you read a lot of books were you kind of struggling like me are there certain books that you'd wish that you wish you had gotten to in quarter one and yeah thank you for watching hit the like button if you would like to subscribe if you want to and i will see you again soon bye